Hi guys, Josh here. Welcome back to another frog vlog. In this video, we're going to be breaking down a couple of vivariums, uh, rebuilding a couple of new vivariums in their place, um, shuffling a couple of frogs around. Um, as well, I'll probably talk a little bit about some vivarium basics while I'm at it. Uh, maybe some other stuff too, we'll see how long it goes, but stick around, I think it's gonna be a good one. So the tanks that I want to upgrade are the ones at the top of this stand here. These are the 18 by 18 by 12 exoterras, so they're only 12 inches high. So I want to upgrade them into these guys, and these are the 18 inch cube exoterras. Uh, so they're 18 by 18 by 18. And these are gonna be uh, really simple builds, just a basic bioactive vivarium, uh, similar to the previous uh, quick and easy vivarium build video I posted, which I think was actually this tank here. Um, so now we're basically just doing the same thing, uh, but in bigger tanks. And they're not too much bigger, uh, same footprint, just six inches taller. So they will give the frogs a little bit more room, but the main reason I wanna do these ones is actually for my own convenience, uh, just cause these short doors on these ones are a little bit hard to get in there and work on. Um, so I've never really put proper tops on these ones. Uh, the one on the right does have a glass top, uh, but it's not siliconed in. And this one just has the regular screen top just wrapped in saran wrap uh, to keep the humidity in. Just with these ones being so short and hard to work in from the front, I wanted to be able to take the tops off uh, to get in there from the top if I ever needed to do any maintenance on these ones. But with these ones being a bit taller and with the taller doors, um, I should be able to work in there a lot easier. And I'm going to be siliconing uh, glass tops on both of these ones. And you'll probably notice these tanks are a little bit dirty. And um, this one's got kind of a messed up top. And I think I've talked about it before on the channel, but it's worth mentioning again um, that looking on your uh, local classified groups or like Facebook marketplaces, stuff like that to find used tanks is actually a great option uh, for dart frog vivariums. You will see this kind of thing all the time uh, where somebody has used it for a reptile and put a heat lamp on top here and ended up melting the plastic. Um, so then they are willing to sell them really cheap. You can see this top is pretty much destroyed. But I did get this tank for only $40, uh, which is really cheap. And I'm going to be replacing this screen top with a glass top anyway, so I don't even need this. So it doesn't really matter what condition it's in. So basically I just need to clean it up a little bit and it's a fraction of the price of buying a new one and um, all the glass and everything is just perfect still. And this one over here, I got a crazy deal on. Um, the top is actually in perfect condition. Uh, the glass is all fine. It came with uh, the light dome and a water dish and a hide and a few other things in there too. And this whole thing uh, with everything together was only $60 as well. So. These two tanks plus all those accessories was a hundred bucks. Uh, it's pretty hard to beat that. That's still a fair bit less than what you would pay for one of these tanks new. And up until yesterday, um, these tanks were occupied by my uh, super blue erratus and my reticulated erratus. I caught them both out of their tanks yesterday um, in preparation for uh, breaking down the tanks. I will talk a bit more about them uh, later in the video. Uh, but I think the first thing to do is uh, clear off the workbench, get these tanks out of the way pull this one down and uh, start taking it apart. And this is what that tank uh, looks like right now. You can see it's been a little bit neglected, but uh, these are my reticulated erratus, which are uh, one of my shyest frogs and they really do seem to do best when I just kind of leave them alone. Um, every time I kind of come in and try to prune or do maintenance, uh, it usually makes them start breeding for a little while. So I try not to disturb them too much. So just kind of ended up with a massive tangle of this uh, Pamela, this Ficus Pamela here, and then uh, a little bit of Monstera hanging on. So, so I'm going to get this all cleaned out, uh, but first I'm just going to Take this glass top here, um, get it cleaned up uh, so I can silicone it into place on this one and let that one start drying. All right, I've got the glass and the tank all cleaned up. Um, so it's ready to silicone it in place here. If you've never seen me do this before, I'll go over it quickly. So just make sure your surfaces are clean and dry. And then I'll just lay a bead of silicone along three sides to start. And you don't need a very thick bead of silicone, basically just enough to uh, hold it in place and uh, provide a seal so the flies can't get out. I usually just put the back in first. 
let it drop into place and then slowly set down the rest of it. Press it in around the edges just to make sure that it's making contact everywhere. That looks pretty good. And you'll notice there's still a gap on the front here that's for ventilation. And uh, now I will install the uh, mesh piece in here. Uh, there's different ways you can do this. I like to silicone the mesh uh, right in place. So same as before, I will start by laying down a little bit of silicone on the front. And I will usually put a little bit uh, thicker bead on this front side uh, just because it has to kind of hold that mesh in. And then I'll just try to lay as uh, straight as possible bead down the glass here. And then I can just line up this screen strip. I will hold it in place uh, and just kind of run my finger along so that the silicone kind of comes up through the screen and go along and push this front edge into the silicone as well. And you can go along and add some extra if you need to, just to make sure that screen is kind of sealed in on all the edges. And I like to just come out on the front and kind of smooth it in with my finger. And then for a final step, I like to use a piece of masking tape. But then I just press this down. The back side is holding on the glass here, so it kind of holds everything in place. Prevents it from lifting up out of the silicone. And that's just temporary to hold everything in place. And then also uh, when I pull this up, it will leave a nice uh, smooth finish on the silicone on this edge here. Alright guys, this tank is pretty much good to go here. Um, it's definitely looking a little bit sparse uh, now that it's got that extra height there. There's definitely a little bit of uh, unused vertical space there. So I do want to get some more wood for this one to fill it in a little bit more. Um, but I'm running a little bit low right now so I'm going to have to pick some more up. Once the plants grow in a little bit more, it, uh, it'll look a little more filled in as well. But this should be just fine for the frogs. Uh, they've got the glass top there to keep the humidity high. Lots of little hiding spots uh, behind the cork bark and the plants and everything there. So, so the frogs should uh, be happy in here. And I did get this other one up here uh, just to get it out of the way and so I can clean out the other one that was here. Um, but I don't have the glass for it yet. I was hoping the glass order would be in today, uh, but it looks like it's going to be tomorrow now. So I'm going to have to come back to this one in a future video, I think. I don't know how much I'm going to show of this build since it's going to be pretty much the same as what this one was. For now, I'm going to uh, release the frogs back in here. Uh, the super blues are going to be going into this tank. Uh, normally, after a new build, I would wait a while for the tank to cycle, but because this one is basically uh, just everything swapped out, um, I'm pretty comfortable with just letting the frogs right back in here right now, so uh, let's do that. All right, so this is the male super blue. Uh, this is just kind of their temporary a uh, little holding tank while I was rebuilding this one. Uh, just moist paper towels and a little hut to hide under. Um, and this is just fine for a temporary home for them. I wouldn't want to keep uh, dirt frogs and something like this for very long term though. But uh, to catch these guys, I usually just use some sort of little cup like this. And I will just kind of try to... Difficult to do with one hand while holding the camera, but I will just try to herd the frogs into the cup without having to touch them too much. Uh, 
Uh, so that's the male. We'll do the female under here. So we've got the super glues moved into their new home, um, which is going to give them more space and make it easier for me to work in there. I'm not able to get the other tank done in this video uh, just because I'm still waiting for the glass top there. Um, but the reticulated erratus that were in the other tank, I have now moved into a 10 gallon tank, uh, kind of a planted bioactive, just another simple setup. Uh, but that's going to be kind of their home for the next little while. Um, they are my smallest of all of my dendro babies, uh, so 10 gallon is still a little bit small for them I think, but uh, there's only two of them and they should be fine in there. So I think that other 18 inch cube I'm going to use uh, for a different erratus, I'm going to put my Colombian yellows in there. Um, just because they are a little bit bigger, they're about the size of the super blues and I do have four of those instead of just the pair. Uh, but that's what's going on with uh, the erratus. And then the other one I wanted to show you guys is this tank behind me right here. Um, if you remember this was the one that was temporarily housing the fire skinks that I recently got but I've set it back up for dart frogs now and I'm going to be putting my uh, Tinctorius Robertus in there. Uh, they've been uh, living in a 10 gallon up until now as well so uh, this is a 20 gallon long so it'll be a nice upgrade for them. I set this one up about a week ago I didn't film it or anything uh, just because I was in a rush but uh, it's ready to go now I think so I'm going to uh, release the Robertus in here. All right, I think that's gonna do it uh, for this quick little vlog here. Uh, nothing too exciting, I guess, uh, but I'm trying not to do anything uh, too crazy right now. Just trying to get everything kind of uh, sorted and organized because there are gonna be some uh, pretty big changes to the frog room uh, coming up here soon in the next couple of months. So uh, make sure you guys get subscribed so you don't miss that. Um, if you guys could like and share this video, I'd really appreciate it as well. Uh, it really helps out the channel. Um, if you have any uh, questions, concerns, comments, or suggestions for future videos, you can leave those down below as well. Thanks again for watching guys and until next time, happy frogging.